Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pulled pork pancakes. That's right, it really is too bad that Father's Day brunch isn't a thing. Because if it was, this would be an amazing thing to serve. And while I don't know your dad, I do know he would like this. What's that? He's a vegetarian? Okay, but I still stand by my statement. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by mixing up the spices for our maple braised pork shoulder, which of course is always going to begin with some salt. And then to that, we will add some freshly ground black pepper, some smoked paprika, some chipotle pepper, as well as some garlic powder. And then last but not least, a little bit of crushed fennel seed. And then we'll take a spoon and give that a quick mix before we use it to season about a three pound boneless pork shoulder roast. And if your pork shoulder, also known as a pork butt, was sort of butterflied in the middle to take out the bone, we are definitely gonna to wanna to open that up and season the inside as well. And if it wasn't, don't worry, it's still gonna be fine. And like I said, we're gonna go ahead and season this all over with our spice rub, but we're only gonna use about three quarters of it. And we will save about 25% to season at the end if we need to. And the reason we chose these particular spices is because this is gonna be braised with some maple syrup and then eventually served with pancakes. So the spices here are inspired by the breakfast meats that go with pancakes. All right, so we got the sweetness and smokiness from the paprika and the chipotle, which is gonna hopefully remind us of bacon. And then we also have the black pepper, garlic, and fennel, which are commonly used to flavor sausage, which is another delicious meat product served with pancakes. So what I'm trying to say is we really thought this one through. And that's it, once we've applied about 75% of those spices, and we finish with the fat side up, we will set the rest of our seasonings aside for later, at which point we're gonna place this into the center of a very hot 450 degree oven for 30 minutes to sear on and achieve a really nice dark brown crust on the outside, on the outside, on the outside. And then what we'll do as soon as that comes out is reduce our oven temp down to 300 and then add our braising liquids. And that will start with a quarter cup of maple syrup, which according to my research is really good with pancakes. So we'll go ahead and drizzle that around and over, followed by the same amount of apple cider vinegar, which is gonna be very important to balance the sweetness, as well as cut that fatty richness of the pork. And then we'll finish up with a cup of cold fresh water. And once all that's in there, let's go ahead and grab our tongs and very carefully grab our pork and use it to give those braising liquids a little stir at which point we're gonna take some heavy duty foil and wrap this very, very tightly. And of course, as usual, we always want the shiny side down. Otherwise, this could burst into flames. And please be careful when you wrap this, since that pan is probably still gonna be pretty hot, but we do wanna get it nice and tight. So if you have to use some towels, and that's it, once we have that all wrapped, we'll place it back into the center of our now 300 degree oven, where we will let it cook for about three more hours, or until it is very, very tender, and positively pullable, which is not something we want to guess at. So what we'll do is pull off the foil and make sure it's literally fork tender, where they slide in with virtually no effort. And then what we'll do is let that rest for about 20 minutes or so before we take a couple forks and pull it apart. And how fine you want to shred this is going to be up to you. All right, some people like to leave it in larger size pieces, while others prefer to shred this down very, very fine. And if you're keeping score at home, I prefer it somewhere in the middle. And then once shredded, of course, we're going to want to give it a taste. Not only to check for seasoning, but the smell of this cooking is just insanely good. And after about three hours, you are really going to want to bite. And then you remember that little bit of spice mix we saved from earlier? If you need to adjust, you can go ahead and use that now, which mine really didn't need. So I just sprinkled on a little bit to make the point. And in case you're wondering, that was just unbelievably delicious. And one of the best pulled porks I've had since I can't remember when. And yes, you can make this well ahead of time and then just reheat it when you're doing your pancakes. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and mix up ours now. And that's gonna start with some all-purpose flour, plus some cornmeal. Okay, since we're serving these with pulled pork, I thought sort of a cornbread approach would work nicely. And then to that, we will toss in some white sugar, as well as a little bit of salt. And then we'll finish our dry ingredients up with a little bit of baking powder and a little touch of baking soda. And once all that's in there, we'll go ahead and take a whisk and mix this for about 30 seconds or so or until we think everything is combined, at which point we can add our wet ingredients, which will be one large egg, some buttermilk, or if you want regular milk. But if you use regular milk, you don't need the baking soda, which is there to react with the acid in the buttermilk. And then last but not least, a little bit of melted butter. And that's it, we'll simply take our whisk and we'll mix this until it's just combined, but no more. 
Okay, so we're basically just going to stir this until that flour disappears, so as not to overmix it. And once that's just barely combined, we will stop. And we'll let that rest for about 10 minutes or so before we start making our pancakes, which I like to do in some melted butter over between medium and medium high heat. And I'm going to do like three relatively small pancakes per serving, which we'll then go ahead and stack up with two layers of our pulled pork. And just in case you've never made pancakes before, what you're going to want to do is wait until you see little bubbles popping up through the surface, which are how pancakes tell you they're ready to turn. And when we do see those bubbles breaking through, we'll go ahead and take a spatula and give these a flip which must be done confidently, okay, with borderline arrogance. All right, a pancake can sense fear. So flip those like you know what you're doing. And then once turn, we'll go ahead and let those cook for another minute or two, at which point we're ready to move on to final assembly. So we'll go ahead and place one pancake down and then top that with as much pulled pork as we see fit, along with, of course, some of those accumulated juices. And if you wanted to add a little bit of butter and maple syrup to each layer, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Kelvin Kleins of designing these pulled pork pancake shrines. But personally, I think adding a little bit in there is not a bad idea. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and do three pancakes with two layers of pork for a total of five layers, which I think is a good amount of layers. But if you wanted to make your pancakes a little smaller and build this up a little bit higher, that would be fine. All right, that's between you and gravity. And that's it once we have that last pancake placed over. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the top with some fresh maple syrup. And then for one final, final touch, since the bowl was sitting right next to me, I sprinkled over a little bit of our spice blend. And if I'm being objective, from a food styling aspect, this plate probably could have used a big red strawberry, but I didn't have one. And besides, dads don't care about fruit. And that's it, our pulled pork pancakes are ready to enjoy. And as you may know, I'm a huge fan of the sweet and savory combo. And this, my friends, was just about as good as that approach can get. Okay, the aggressively spiced maple braised pork is just perfect with these pancakes. And as we touched on earlier, since we use spices reminiscent of breakfast meats, I think everything just pairs together seamlessly. And while this certainly would work wonderfully with whatever your favorite pancake recipe is, the fact that these pancakes were a little bit cornbreadish really did take this over the top. And I think next time, just for fun, I might try some minced up jalapeno in the pancakes to turn up that savoriness even a little bit higher. And as good as they were, even if you have no plans for making pancakes, like ever, the next time you're wanting pulled pork, I highly recommend using this recipe. Since pancakes are not, it was spectacular, especially for a relatively fast oven version. But officially, I do hope you eat them both together, as this was one of the most delicious breakfasts I've had in a long time, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.